الحمد لله الذي أحيانا بعد ما أماتنا وإليه النشور اللهم أصبح بنا من نعمة أو بحد من خلقك فمنك وحدك لا شريك لك فلك الحمد ولك الشكر اللهم إنا أصبحنا نشيدك ونشيد حمرة عرشك وملائكتك وجميع خلقك أنك أنت الله لا إله إلا أنت وحدك لا شريك لك وأن محمدا عبدك ورسولك يقول المؤلف الإمام أبي زكريا النووي رحمه الله تعالى باب العفو والإعراض عن الجاهلين قال الله تعالى خذ العفو وأمر بالعرف وأعرض عن الجاهلين وقال تعالى فاصفح الصفح الجميل وقال تعالى وليعفوا وليصفحوا ألا تحبون أن يغفر الله لكم وقال تعالى والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين قال تعالى ولمن صبر وغفر إن ذلك لمن عزم الأمور والآيات في الباب كثيرة معلومة وأن عائشة رضي الله عنها أنها قالت للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هل أتى عليك يوم كان أشد من يوم أحد؟ قال لقد لقيت من قومك وكان أشد ما لقيت منهم يوم العقبة إذا عرضت عفسي على ابن عبد يا ليل ابن عبد كلال فلم يجبني إلى ما أردت فانطلقت وأنا مهموم على وجهي فلم أستفق إلا وأنا بقرن الثآلب فرفعت رأسي فإذا أنا بسحابة قد أضلتني فنظرت فإذا فيها جبريل عليه السلام فناداني فقال إن الله تعالى قد سمي قول قومك لك وما رد عليك وقد بعث إليك ملك الجبال تأمره بما شئت فيهم فناداني ملك الجبال فسلم علي ثم قال يا محمد إن الله قد سمي قول قومك لك وأنا ملك الجبال وقد بعثني ربي إليك لتأمرني بأمرك فما شئت إن شئت أدبقت عليهم الأخشبين فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بل أرجو أن يخرج الله من أصلابهم من يعبد الله وحده لا يشرك به شيئا متفق عليه فز الله سبحانه وتعالى the one who gave us the life back after he took it away from us with peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad um, today we are on the a new chapter chapter 75 which always talking about manners and good manners said forgiveness of the ignorance you know this is something that sometimes is tough people who are ignorant sometimes they can talk to you badly or react to you badly and how you can because either you have two options either you ignore them or you'll be like them because if you respond to them you're going to be judged in the same way like them that's why you need to understand this and realize it's tough but it's better when the ignorant you know talk to them they say to them peace be upon you but they don't want to argue with you because he gonna drag you to his levels so you gotta be you know stand with your level not to be ignorant like them but sometimes if you think you're crazy i'm crazy than you that's mean you're going to his level all right so that's why um it's always great to have that patience and not to respond to their way. Allah said, خُذِ الْعَفْوَىٰ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضَ عَنِ الْجَاهِرِينَ Show forgiveness and join, and join what is good and turn away from the foolish. Because if you try to respond to them, you're going to be a foolish like them. So you, know, you, you need to understand who they are and try not to play their game. Allah said, فَصْفَحِ الصَّفْحَ الْجَبِيلِ So overlook, O Muhammad, their fault with gracious forgiveness. So, let them pardon and forgive. You know, pardon and forgive is two things different. But you get up when you pardon, you forgive, when you forgive, you pardon. Do you not love that Allah should forgive you? And we know this ayah, Sabu Nuzul al Mistah, when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, decided to stop his financial aid toward him when he was sharing the the, the, the hypocrites, you know, statement to Allah, the Aisha radiallahu anha. So he decided, and as he doing such things to his daughter, he stopped his financial aid and Allah said to him, Allah tuhibbuna ayyaghfir Allah Would you not like that Allah forgive you? 
Yes, indeed. And then he give him back all what he stole from. Allah said, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِدِينَ Among, among the, crit, the criteria of the people of Jannah, that's they who pardon men, they pardon people. Verily Allah loves al-muhsinun, the good doers. Said, and verily, whosoever shows patience and forgive, that will truly be from the thing recommended by Allah. وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمِنْ عَزِبِ الْغُرُ and the first hadith is the one we just mentioned yesterday, the hadith of Abu Aisha radiallahu anha, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, after the three years that he was banned in Mecca, and then Abu Khadija radiallahu anha passed away, his uncle passed away, now he lose uh, the physical support in Mecca, and he decided now to go outside to look for some, you know, support, anyone who can you know, support him, or host him, or take, you know, protect him and go with him, then he will, you know, transmit the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time he went to Taif, it's what happened when he went to Taif. Abu Daisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did you ever had a difficult day, like more than the day of Uhud? Because we know what happened on the day of Uhud, when the Baru start the Muslim, you know, one and then as the Prophet ﷺ told the fifty companions to stay on top of the the mountain Jabal al Rumah, he said it doesn't matter even if you saw us being killed one one after the other, do not the same. So don't come down. And then if you see us also if we win, stay there. But what happened, as Allah said, they disobeyed the Prophet. ﷺ. Because they say, oh, you already win, but we're going to wait, let's go get our own stuff. Because when the it's happened, the, the war, whatever you get there is for you. So Allah said, مِنْكُمْ مَا يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَا يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ لِيَبْتَلِيَكُمْ وَلَقَدْ عَفَعَنْكُمْ Indeed, some wanted the life, this dunya, to get the material of this life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already forgave them all as the companion. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ عَفَعَنْهُمْ Allah already forgave them. For the deeds. So then Khalid ibn Walid, that time he was a Muslim, and he came after them, and then they just put them on the middle now. And then many Muslim, many companion was, you know, uh, was martyred in that day, 70, and among them Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet and his brother, uh, because I think they, they had the same breastfeeder. Then that Abu Aisha radiallahu thought is the tough day that the person had in his life. But he said no. The toughest day is when he went to Taif and his people did what they did. Because they take the, the young and the ignorant people, you know, the crazy people, and then they throw rock to him. He was bleeding. But what he did, and then he was coming back. He said, when I was coming back, and Jibril alayhi salam, you know, talk to him and say, oh Jibreel, Ya oh, Muhammad, Allah sent me, He's, Allah heard what your people said to you and what they did to you. And then he's sending me here to assist you. And I'm with the angel who is in charge of the mountain. Because Taif is between two mountains. He said, if you allow me, I will just put them together and finish with them all. But the Prophet said, it's not what I want. But on that time, he was being, you know, tortured, whatever they did to him. You know, it's very hard because you come into people to show them the right way to, you know, to save them from the hellfire and it's the way they react towards you. But as the Prophet ﷺ know the value of what he calling them to, and they are ignorant. They don't know, like, how that is important. That's why you cannot be like them. That's why you have to ignore those who are the ignorant. You're the foolish people. It's how they are. They cannot value what you have. Now, if you try to play a game like them, you're going to be like them. That's what I said. What I wish, or what I hope, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring people from them who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's what happened. So you will see how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, was patient and he turned away from the ignorant. Because if he was trying to take vengeance for himself, he would say to, 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 Jib, uh, to the, the angel of the mountain, just finish with them. Next time they will learn lessons. They don't know who I am. I got all his power. He didn't do that. And sometimes how we are as a woman, if somebody does something, you know, he don't know who I am. I will show him who I am, especially in Africa. 
but he put him in jail. He would know he regret this for all his life. The Prophet wasn't like that. He never take vengeance for himself. Only the had that word yesterday. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then he do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all this we need to learn from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he's our best model and he's our model that we can follow as Muslim. As Allah said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, you have in the personality of Muhammad the best example to follow. You don't need to read any book. You don't need to read any book that's a motivational book or whatever they call it, psychologies, whatever. If you read the Quran and the Sunnah, you will find yourself there. But today we don't want to read the Sunnah. We don't want to read the Quran. We see people go and buy books, say it's a motivational book, whatever they call it. Spend your money, spend time, wasting time. When you read those books, you're not going to get no reward. But when you read the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu whenever you pray upon him, is a reward ten times that you will be rewarded. Whenever you read any hadith, you can say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, but as a Muslim today, we are turning away from, you know, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're trying to find a solution of our problem somewhere else where we can now. We're going to try, but it's going to be just wasting time. All our solutions in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must believe to that and try to get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to better our, our character. Make us more Muslim, those who follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.